Hi everyone, thanks for joining our session dedicated to privileged access management. Our focus today will be on remote access. First of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Neila. I'm a business developer at for Wallix on Af East Africa's market. Danish Khan with me is our pre-sales manager on MEA's market. So the agenda of today, we're going to talk about, as I said earlier, privileged access. Then Danish will treat the technical aspect of our topic, showing you the benefit of uh, the remote access and secure remote access through a PAM solution. Before going further, let's take a few seconds to talk about COVID-19. The virus that spread it worldwide and affected businesses, our jobs, and every single aspect of our daily lives. And even some projects have been postponed because of a matter of budget. I guess that you reacted to the crisis and tried at least to took the right decisions quickly to ensure the security of remote access. However, how do you make sure that everything has been managed? The sanitary crisis highlighted failures of privileged users who were no longer a few individuals as employees had to work from home. In the meantime, we are facing an explosion of privileges thanks to internet, <laughs> digitalizations of all the sectors and the devices, the IoT, and even sometimes endpoints. But the question is, what is really a privileged user? A user who has access to critical assets. But what happens if privileged users' accounts are compromised? Let me picture it. It's like if you're being responsible of your family jewels and to avoid being stolen, get in, you keep them hidden in your place. Would it be risky to give your keys to a complete stranger and leave him by himself? That's a good question. Let me answer that by a simple fact. 80% of the breaches are the results of privileged accounts misuse. And I'll add also that more 70% of cyber crimes are coming from the inside of the company. Another few information, I guess that all of you, I guess that all of you heard about EasyJet and Honda who have been targeted during this crisis. Just look at the figures, they are talking by themselves. I would add also something, the insurer of Brisley have noticed that more than 25% spike in clients being hit by cyber attack in the first quarter of 2020, comparing to last year, the huge, huge uh, spike. That is why we are, as a vendor, specialized specialized in the cybersecurity and especially the privileged access management, we are convinced that in order to secure the, the IT environment, the secure remote access needs to go through the implementing of a privileged access management solution. Why so? Because it's a better alter alternative, sorry, so far to VPN. Besides, Access management by Wallix, without disclosing further on this matter at this stage of the presentation, I'll let Danish talk about it in details later during the demonstration, allow you to secure your remote access from end to end with a zero trust approach. I mean that you need to prove the identity of all the users thanks to the MFA, which by the way is one of the requirements of your uh, of this part of Africa. The MFA is a requirement of the, thanks to the regulation. 
The secondly, the, uh, the access security, thanks to the British Access Management and the PEDM, which is the Privileged, um, privileged Elevation Delegation Management. And, and the endpoint protection. So you have the, all the chain from the, the identity until the endpoint user. And these are the three steps to have to implement in order to keep your IT environment safe and to control better your users. You may ask yourself now, who is this vendor? From where are, are he coming? <laughs> but let's talk about Wallix Group a few seconds. So the idea of Wallix was born in Africa. Our founders used to work in closely with the head of IT and the CISO for management services. And at that time, they realized there that the IT teams were facing some issues in uh, regarding the management of the users, passwords. It was, sorry for, for the word, but it's a, it was a really mess. So they decided to create Wallix and to develop a privileged access management. And step by step, thanks to the trust of our customer and our solution, we expanded our activity all over the world. We have some offices in UK, Paris, obviously, Germany, USA, Ivory Coast, Dubai, and I hope so in Kenya soon. More of, we have like, more than 1,000 of customers with um, like 90% of renewal of support contracts, which means that they are pretty satisfied. And we cover more than 70 countries and in Africa, 25. And we work with resellers and integrators, which are um, certified in our solutions. And we have like more than 170. So his is our history, and now I'll no, it's okay, Danish. I'll take I'll let Danish take the lead for the technical demonstration and explanation. As Nayan explained, that why privilege access management is important, and uh, what does remote uh, users, as in uh, uh, remote users, uh, it's important for remote users to take remote access in a secured manner. Okay. Uh, if you see here uh, our solution, I'm going to present uh, our two-in-one solution today, which is uh, privilege access management plus secure remote access. Uh, the first, uh, if you look at the center, if you're able to see my mouse uh, key, uh, there's a product called as Bastion in the center, which is stored in core IT network. Now this Bastion uh, consists of uh, several components called as session manager, password manager, and the password vault. Uh, it also has an optional AAPM, which is called as application to application password management. Uh, session manager is responsible for recording your sessions. That means it will give you video recording. Uh, it will give you uh, control, like you know, blocking specific apps. It will enable least privilege on your sessions uh, through session manager. We also have something called as password manager, which will randomize your password, change your passwords on a periodic basis. So you can define a date uh, in a month wherein your password manager will connect to all your privileged credentials and uh, change it uh, on your defined policies. You can give it 20 digit passwords, 25 digit passwords, the complexity you want, like uh, four alpha alphabets, lowercase, uppercase, the way you want. Apart from that, what it does is after changing the credentials, it stores those credentials inside the password vault. Now, this password vault is very important because we have done, we have a certification on this entire product. We have two certifications. If you see on the right hand top, of my screen uh, certified by ANSSI. That means we have CSPN certification on the Bastion, uh, which certifies or guarantees that, you know, uh, it's, it's uh, safe and secured to store your critical information like your privileged credentials, your SSH keys, 
uh, inside the vault. Occasionally, whenever the privileged user is coming to access the bastion, the bastion invokes the credential automatically and gives you single sign on on the target devices. So for example, today, if there is an admin who is working internally in the office, of course, due to COVID-19, nobody is working from office. But uh, right now, you can imagine if there is a working working from office, he can have an MFA enabled for his login. And after the MFA, he will log into the bastion. He will see a list of authorized devices like Windows, Linux, applications, which he can connect. Through the bastion, uh, you can connect to these target devices with controlled access. And op optionally, you can also elevate your access. Now, when it comes to uh, access through bastion, the best part is we give you access through native tools like RDP and SSH. Uh, we also support something called as the invisible mode, wherein the user will not will come to know if there is a PAM in solution in place, okay, which we also called as the transparent mode. Now, today, uh, if you have 10 users in your organizations uh, which need an access to an RDP server, you need port opening from your end user machine to the target device, which is 3389, which is considered as a vulnerable port, which is more prone to attacks. And that's why it is recommended by Gartner, Koppinger, Cole, and everybody that you should not open direct ports from your end user machine to the target devices. With Bastion in place, it becomes a man in middle and you need, you do need not uh, have the requirement to open direct ports from end user machine to the target device. Instead, what you can do is you can open only 443, a secured port from your end user machine to the bastion. This is where we make the difference and we bring in added control and security. Apart from that, we bring in an uh, exceptional, uh, exceptional uh, popular product from Wallix, which is uh, Access Manager. Access Manager is nothing but uh, it's a remote access gateway. Uh, which provides remote access all over. The, I mean, you, you stay anywhere in the world if you have internet and you have hosted this access manager component inside your organization, inside the DMZ, and you have published it to the internet, You any admin sitting at home can have secured access only on HTTPS port. So in terms of technology, uh, you can also say it works like a SSL VPN. But of course, it's not exactly an SSL VPN because here it's it's a, it's a PAM proxy which is sitting in the DMZ. It does not contain any data. So that means it doesn't have any risk if we expose it to the internet because all the passwords and the keys and the information is stored inside the bastion, which is well protected inside the core IT network. Apart from your regular security, which you have in your environment like antivirus, updates, patches, we have a hardened Linux Debian OS, uh, which will protect it. Plus, it has inbuilt DDoS protection as an appliance. Uh, it comes in VM as well as hardware. So you can deploy it in VMware, Hyper-V. We give you appliance like OVF file. Uh, we are also compatible with cloud. So with all the leading clouds uh, in the world, like Google Cloud, Microsoft Azure, uh, Amazon Web Services, we support all of this cloud services as well. OpenStack, uh, we have we are available as an application inside the cloud, so you can just download us and I mean you can uh, install it uh, on your uh, uh, cloud if you prefer in future. Uh, in case if you want an on-prem solution, we also propose on-prem. Uh, you can install it in VMware or a hardware. We can also give you an optional MFA. Uh, which will be like a push notification on the mobile. It works with biometrics. It works with uh, a mobile app or, you know, if you want to work with uh, uh, solutions like this. Uh, another interesting component we have is application to application password management. Uh, this component means that uh, in case if, if you have passwords which are part of hard coded scripts, so let's say uh, today you want to connect to a network device, but in reality, once the PAM is implemented, you will not have any passwords handy with you. Okay, so it will be all inside the vault, but to connect to some application, you need privileged credentials, right? What we can do is with this APM command line tool, we can create a script 
so that it automatically fetches the password whenever your network device is about to connect for any other purpose outside the bastion okay so this application to application password management is very important when you have uh, devops operations and you know you need passwords for specific instances and running uh, an application as a service account so that's where uh, it's very important apart from that we also have a discovery component which is uh, considered as very important when it comes to pam uh, we discover your sleeping accounts so over the years you have uh, people coming in and people going out of your organization uh, everybody has their own credentials uh, in the domain it's fine i mean in the domain at least you can go and check which credentials are there and which are removed uh, the main worry the main concern is that uh, what about those linux uh, accounts what about those uh, local admin accounts which are there how do we discover that there is no concrete way to discover all these things uh, in a go with a human effort okay so with volix discovery we allow you to uh, discover those sleeping accounts and reduce the risk to the maximum because each account which is not usable and there in the system is a risk for you because it has been not changed for times and nobody probably nobody is aware if it is even there okay so any attacker can misuse it and uh, you know make sure uh, i mean spoil your environment so that's why we give you discovery with the bastion as of now as part of current plans what we are doing is uh, we are providing uh, volix discovery and secure remote access uh, which is uh, completely uh, free of cost with our pam solution okay that's one uh, we integrate with all possibly all the devices like rdp ssh linux unix oracle uh, you can also talk about web clients like uh, uh, sql uh, management studio your oracle for toad your toad for oracle uh, let it be your hide sql uh, fortigate web firewall almost all the uh, options are here available uh, this was from the architecture side i have made a custom demo for you uh, which will show you that uh, how we connect with the, this architecture using secure remote access so without uh, taking much more time i will show you the live demo now uh, if i go here so this is my screen wherein uh, i have made a custom demo this is my volix access manager okay so if you see on the screen i have uh, acdf pam acdf pam means i have used uh, africa cyber defense forum logo and uh, font and africa so you you can see that the actual screen of volix access manager is completely changed as per customer and prospect what i meant by that is i have completely white labeled the application okay nobody knows what you are actually using in your environment so if i want to log in i will just put my credentials my user is sam willis now sam willis is a normal user who comes into the organization and wishes to i mean in a, being in organization or sitting remotely in your office he wishes to connect uh, to the critical applications and the critical devices uh, uh, in his environment now if he is at home whenever he types the correct password uh you can actually type the password and hit enter so it will validate from the active directory and i have an mfa configured uh, in my system so it will give me a push notification that you know you need to connect uh, you need to approve the request from your mobile uh, to get access so so as soon as i type my credentials i see authentication request here i have to type my pin this is my mfa and this is the push notification wherein i will authorize the connection once i authorize the connection i am actually able to connect uh, to the system so if you see i am connected to the web application which is access manager it says loading volix access manager now inside the volix access manager i have my personal customization like windows access linux server uh, app server these accounts are by default assigned to me so i can access these servers with these privilege accounts so for an example i want to click here and connect to windows first 
it will give me a gdpr warning screen that i'm going to get recorded audited and it it is it says please contact your acdf bastion administrator i've customized this message as well so i will just click on okay and it will connect me to the access similarly i can also connect to a linux server if i want to everything will happen on the browser so i can open a putty session i can execute a remote command like this I don't even need to connect to the server to execute a command. This is very important because you need some users to only execute commands and get the result. Uh, I can open an inbuilt SFTP. So for transfer of files, I can do a selective upload and a selective download. I can open putty on the browser. The most important thing, everything I am opening on the browser without opening any file from the end user machine. That means if I have any infected file on my laptop, my servers will not be impacted because I'm not using those files. So let's say if I type some commands, this is connected my Linux server. I'm typing some commands. You can see uh, I'm working. Uh, I'm working on the internet, but it seems like you know I'm working as a, as a, as in on my own laptop. It is so smooth. Now let's say I want to elevate myself by a sudo. Okay. As soon as I try to elevate myself, let's see what happens. It says patent detected. That means uh, I have put least privilege on the access, even though web admin is a credential which is equivalent to root, but least privilege policy doesn't allow me to execute this command, which is from the bastion, which is the PAM solution. It is not allowing me to do this. So I will close this session. Now I will go to Windows. My Windows is connected here. Uh, I wish to connect uh, and open some file. Now this is again on the browser. I made a notepad. I will save this file. Now I am a smart user. I want to jump from one server to another server on one system. Okay. Internally, I want to jump because there is no firewall within the same IP range, right? So if I want to jump, let's see what happens. As soon as I execute MSTSC process, it blocks me. Again, I have implemented a least privilege policy here. Even my user is a domain administrator. I cannot do an RDP to a system from a system. I can block it on the port level. That's where the technology comes into picture. We have something called as OCR, optical character recognition. What it does is uh, uh, it identifies uh, the applications which are blocked inside the system and it will never ever allow you to execute it no matter how much how, how much you try. Uh, we have a unique feature called as a session probe, which is a patented technology which will capture rich metadata. Whatever you do inside this uh, server, everything will be captured. So let's say I'm going here. Uh, I will give you one more example. Let's say if there is an auditor who wishes to see the remote activity uh, from his home. Okay, so I will just open this here. I will take the session out. Okay, I will minimize this like this. Okay, so this is the actual session I was working on. Now as an auditor, I want to connect and see what the user is doing. Okay, somewhere another, another part in the world, uh, maybe inside the organization, I'm sitting and I wish to see and monitor this access as an auditor. So I will log in with my privilege. which is auditor. This is the Wallix Bastion console. I log in inside. I see one application, one access called as audit. As soon as I click on audit, I see uh, current sessions. OK, now in the current sessions, I see Sam Willis is connected uh, to 150.1 using uh, privilege account demo uh, this is the account and this is the account he is doing okay now this is the target ip and this is the start time and the end time you can also monitor the time the vendor is connected okay i will just click on connect so i will connect to the session real time as an auditor let's say if i want to guide somebody and say it is asking for permission so i will go here and approve the permission as soon as I approve the permission, I should be able to see what the person is doing on the left hand side. Okay, if you see 
everything what I do on the right hand side, you can see on the left hand side. Apart from that, you can also see uh, I can control as an auditor as well the screen on the left hand side. So I'm working from the left hand side right now. It's the same server. I will try to log off. This was this is called as session collaboration, which we also call as session sharing. Okay. Now I will now if you see there are no live sessions right now. It's gone. So as soon as you disconnect, you can also disconnect a user directly with this option. You can say as an auditor, you can select the session and disconnect it uh, if you wish to as an auditor. Now I will show you an access for an application. So let's say uh, you want to access an application uh, like a web firewall or something. So first I will connect uh, to a firewall. So what it does is uh, in the background, uh, it connects to an RDP, a centralized RDP server, and it will show only the services of the web browser. It will also hide the URL from you. That's the security feature. Everything is happening on HTTPS. If you look here, it's happening on HTTPS. So it will connect to the server and then it will try to open my application, which is my firewall. Uh, the, the technology is so automatic that you don't even need to click on a self-signed certificate error.